there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Working from home is becoming more and more popular, and it's easy to see why. No more commuting, no more office politics, and you know exactly where everything is. But are you sure you've got enough space to live and to work? Or is it time to move? This week, we're searching for space. And since we're in Scotland, where the rules about house buying are very different, we've really got our work cut out for us. We're professional house hunters, and our job is to make sure the buyer gets the best possible property for the best possible price, whether it's a loft in the city or a little place in the country. Over the coming weeks, we'll be finding properties for people who have to move but need a little help. But with only one long weekend to find them the home of their dreams, it's a race against the clock. This week, we're going to be helping the Williams family. Hugh works in South Queensbury for Motorola, and Jane has just started her own business designing horse blankets and riding wear. They have a three-year-old daughter called Rosie. They converted and sold an old barn in Leicester, making a tidy profit in the process, but now they're living with Jane's mum and stepdad. They're willing to travel anywhere within an hour of Edinburgh and have 270,000 to spend. They've been looking for some time now and have had several properties fall at the last hurdle. Jane's parents want their house back. Oh, how long have you been here? Um, since last We've been July. here about 13 oh, years goodness. now, haven't we? <laughs> when we first moved up here, um, we expected to find somewhere quite quickly, and obviously we've been here nine months now, so we're living on top of each other. My priority would be a house and then business second. My priority would be, I'm going to get slated for this, would be to get the story sorted out for the business. The condition of the property, we really don't care as long as it's structurally sound. As long as the, the land and the setting is perfect, the location is absolutely crucial for us. The outbuildings would have a use long term for, you know, a business right. and storage and perhaps offices if we could get right. planning and things like okay. that. How much space do you need in the house? We, our last house was a very, very big barn. We converted a barn mm -hmm. in South Leicestershire. So our furniture, we have a lot of furniture that's in storage. And because it were, they were very big rooms, our furniture is very big. I ideally, the minimal amount of land that I would like, the perfect amount would be 25 acres. Maximum would be 40 acres-ish. How do you get to work? Um, by car. Um, I wouldn't want to to sum up, we are looking for a traditional farmhouse without buildings and it must have a spacious interior, 25 acres of land and be within 25 miles of Edinburgh, all for £270,000. I don't think there's any chance of us moving ever again. <laughs> we just want yeah. everything around us again and to sort of feel like it's a home again. <laughs> Jane and Hugh have been looking for nine months. Kirsty and I have got four days to, um, to sort this situation out. The Williams search starts in Stirlingshire, but to find the right house, they are prepared to travel. The only condition they have is that Hugh must be able to get to his job in Edinburgh easily. Stirlingshire, areas around Edinburgh, and even as far afield as the borders all appeal to them. There is a genuine shortage of rural properties, as demand from people moving out of the cities has driven prices up. The greatest rises have been in East Lothian, as people cash in on Edinburgh's property boom, prices here have risen by as much as 35%, compared to a Scottish average of 4.1%. Stirling and Perthshire have also seen property prices rise higher than average. So, for the maximum amount of space and biggest investment potential, the Williams need to look far and wide. But with such fantastic housing stock in these areas, we really should be able to find somewhere that represents genuine value for money. In Scotland, a different system of buying property operates. All potential buyers make offers over the asking price, and the highest bidder wins. So, with the Williams after a large traditional farm without buildings and at least 15 acres of land, all within an hour's drive of Edinburgh, it's time to get to our first viewing. Falcon Hill is 40 miles from Edinburgh, has four bedrooms, two reception rooms and a large kitchen, as well as outhouses and a barn. Its idyllic woodland setting with 32 acres of land seem perfect. The details invite offers over 250,000. Off to you. Oh, thank you, Kirsty. This looks like it. Oh, look, you know what this is, Hugh? Probably could have been. It's, yeah. it's the dog run. Yeah. yeah. Hugh has two flat coat <laughs> retrievers, and he's really concerned that for the last eight months they've been living in the garden shed. 
and he wants them to have a proper space. And this is clearly the space for the dogs that live here. This is the biggest space, yeah. and we've been living in it. Yeah. <laughs> that's very true. You know, before when we talked about your furniture and you were oh. saying that it was quite big, this is a bit of an odd shaped room. It is. We, there's no way we'd get a so even one of the sofas in there. No. I mean, no. my inclination usually would be to think, what's on the other side of that wall? Is it the dining room and could you knock it through? But that's clearly the staircase. Mm. So the only place you could knock it through would be there. Yeah. This would probably be the spare room. Right. Okay. We've got three bedrooms on this floor uh -huh. and a fourth down by the kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this carpet has got to go. Second bedroom. Second bedroom. It just speaks for itself. Although from the outside the house it seems big, its special. first apparent fault are the interior dimensions. The barn we were in before, the rooms were like 24 foot long and maybe, I can't remember exactly, about 20 foot wide. So Each bedroom? Uh, well, yeah. <gasps> They're but huge, yeah. But if our furniture is like all our beds are king size beds. The property it does have the potential stairs. to expand by building extensions. Yeah. But this type of work would put the house out of their budget. Another one of those. Yeah, yeah but then you, this is a two hundred and fifty thousand exactly. pounds house, so you can't do it. and exactly. it costs you another hundred thousand pounds to do exactly. that. No. The house comes with a barn just fifty feet from the main building, and Jane wants to see if it's suitable to run her business from. God, this is amazing. It's huge. I think that the house is so small that you'd really need sort of somewhere to work. This would be where you'd have to set up your yeah. offices and storage. I mean, there's yeah. definitely room in this building to have three or four people walk, working, working for you uh -huh. and quite a lot uh -huh. of storage. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When we first saw the house from the outside, because we were looking for that sort of traditional Scottish feeling, I think, yeah. overall, it's perfect. And then since we've been around the house, unfortunately, um, from my point of view, it's just sort of gone downhill a bit. So, while our first property is in a great location and has room to expand, it doesn't make it onto the Williams shortlist because it just feels too small. It's on the market at 250,000 and very likely to go in excess of that. It still needs work to bring it up to their requirements. We're going to discount it and move on to the next. The next property is just 18 miles from Edinburgh. The old cart house has the potential to fulfil the Williams' needs. It would need major work before they could move in, but the asking price reflects this at around £100,000. Jane and Hugh have said they're willing to take on quite major renovation work, but are they prepared for something as big as this? The one slightly worrying issue from the externals is that the, is that the uh, lane that we drove in up is not available for use from this house. So the owner of this house would have to create their own road oh, no, that way, and that certainly would be an, here. quite a considerable expense. Um, the planning, it does have planning permission, and we've got the plans for those. Your main door's at the front. So that's north, so it's south... South facing. Southwest facing, that's a lovely aspect, isn't it? The aspect of your home is very important for your future happiness you're looking to maximise the sun at all times during the day, so room layout is crucial. The ideal way for your house to face is on an east-west axis, but you're not home and dry yet. Since the sun rises in the east, it's best to have your bedrooms facing east for the morning light. That way, you come home to the setting sun in the west with your living rooms and garden bathed in light. Yeah. Uh, They're proposing yeah, yeah. a room per pillow, which seems tiny. But you don't want seven bedrooms anyway. Well, come on. Oh, look, no. that's two. Here's the that's second two. pillar. So that's yeah. the first room. That's your drawing room, is that? If yeah. you're looking at derelict property, I try to get hold of any development plans here. that have been drawn. They'll help you visualise potential yeah. changes. I'm not sure whether it'd be possible to raise the roof and get bedrooms up here. What do you think? It's, it's a big loft, isn't it? Yeah, it's a huge loft. And it runs the entire length of the barn. Okay. We didn't go in to explore because the structure looked too weak. If you are viewing semi-derelict property, do check with the estate agent that it's Let's safe. Let's just have a look and see what the view would be like from those windows at the back of the barn. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh my goodness. Now whether you can actually see that from the house, I don't know, but you'd certainly sure be able to see it from the garden. 
Always check who your neighbours are. If you end up buying next to commercial properties, you could find that noise and pollution are a major problem. So get on the phone and find out what they do and what hours they work. We need to find out more about what exactly is going on there. It's fine today that should there be any fumes, the wind's taking them in the opposite direction. That's should really they bring them this way, it's definitely going to affect the, the, um, the general quality of life in this address. This property is on the market at around 100,000. But remember the Scottish system, the asking price is low and vendors expect to receive offers above that price. The landlord would be looking for something of about 120,000. It doesn't quite tie up in my head, because if he hasn't sold it for four years, his planning permission is about to run out. Planning permission is actually quite an expensive operation to go through to get complicated planning like this. Um, I think he'd be keen to do a deal, and he'd be quite glad of possibly even 60,000. So, the old cart house has the potential to fulfill all the Williams needs. It's 14 miles from Edinburgh, the living area is big, it has character and storage, the land is available for them to build stables, and access, although costly, would be no problem. It's going to come down to price and whether you actually really want to take on a project of this size. So, not off to a brilliant start, and unfortunately, things were to get a lot weirder before they got any better. Oh, stop doing that! Oh, stop doing that! <laughs> Somebody was up on the roof. Join us in part two to see what happens to the Williams and to find out what else you can buy for a quarter of a million pounds in our hot property guide. Is anybody in there? Stop it, Phil. back with the Williams and we're still hunting for that dream farm for under £270,000 within 25 miles of Edinburgh. It's our second day and we've got three more properties to view. The first property, Grains Farm, had all the space and the land they were looking for, but its appearance was not that of a traditional farmhouse and Jane took an immediate dislike to it. I think we can definitely forget this, Phil. It's not very nice at all. Not happening for you? Mm, definitely not. You should generally trust your instincts, but I would recommend looking at everything, because you never know what you might find. Abdon Farm looked promising from the details, was on the market for 250,000 and was within 25 miles of Edinburgh. But it wasn't quite right. But we did have a disappointing initial reaction, didn't we? Yeah, there's a main road sort of out the front that we thought... Mm. It's and there's a deal. sprawling urban development on oh. the other side of the road. I may be fast-forwarding <laughs> on this, and I, I'll, I, I wait to be slapped down, but it seems to me this is right building, wrong location, and we've just come from right location, wrong building, and it's a pity we can't just put the two together. Do you think you can fix that for us, Phil? This is the uh, sprawling urban here. development. We could stand around for a long time talking about the potential of this plot, but at the end of the day, it's in the wrong location. Back to the Jeep. Following the death of its previous owner, Greenburn Farm had been abandoned only three weeks before. On arrival, the Williams felt very confident, but its exterior was deceptive and hid a whole host of problems. But the asking price was only £60,000. Jane and Hugh are prepared to do renovation work, but what we discovered at Greenburn Farm was not for the faint-hearted. I can see you're not enjoying this, but we've got to look through all of this rubbish. It's the only way we're going to give this property proper consideration. But, Phil, do you set any store by, you know, vibes? This is ghostly. I mean, it's really yeah. haunted. It's got a really, really cool... Yeah. I mean, all the really? windows blown in, but yeah. it It's a derelict like house. We're no, looking Phil, at a derelict it's something, house. No, Phil, it's nothing more than that. And I would really happily spend no more than about two seconds <laughs> in here, so can we get <laughs> a move over? <laughs> Come on. Phil loves it. <laughs> well, can, you, can you look past all of what we're seeing? I've looked past everything. Yeah. I think it's... Uh, Horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I don't know what on earth. In fact, I can't even go back down the stairs. I'm going to jump through the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, they wanted a project, but perhaps not that big. A bit of a long shot. So it's been a disappointing day. Three viewings, three outright rejections. Hugh and Jane have to see if there's any room for compromise. In the meantime, check out these fantastic properties on the market this week for a quarter of a million pounds. 
A splendid flat on two floors situated in the heart of Edinburgh's new town with three public rooms, three bedrooms and two bathrooms is looking for offers over £225,000. Or if the countryside appeals more, then how about parting with £275,000 for this charming thatched cottage in Hampshire? It has plenty of space with three bedrooms, its own garage and a mature garden. If we're looking for something a little further afield, then the little chapel in Somerset could be the house for you. It's a four-bedroom converted 19th century chapel with a garden and parking and could be yours for £250,000. In London, you get slightly less for your money. But you could do a lot worse than a two-bedroom flat in the Grade 2 listed Imperial Hall on London City Road, priced at £245,000. Finally, if all you want is a break, then look no further than this stunning cottage complex in Abergavenny. Priced at £250,000, you get four bedrooms, a garage, stables and acres of land for your money. The choice is yours. It's day three and we still don't have a serious contender. Overnight, Hugh decides to widen the search to include properties more than an hour's drive from Edinburgh. With time running out, we leave Phil back at the hotel looking for new leads. Old Shoreswood Hall is well outside the Williams target area and is actually in Northumberland. But the details for this property look so good that we can't resist a viewing. Even at £285,000, 15 grand above their limit. Wow. This is the most incredible spot, isn't it? It's absolutely excellent. It's beautiful. I mean, the, the view is just the most staggering thing I've ever seen. Now, we've had this before. We've had a fabulous spot and we've stood outside the house and we've said, oh my God, this is amazing. And then we've gone in and we've come out really disappointed and sort of down on the floor. So we're going to go in and have a look and fingers, cross. fingers crossed. Fingers crossed yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a delicious smell. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that fireplace. Isn't uh, that sofa, beautiful? It's the same sofa as that. <laughs> yeah. Always, you know, we said so, we were okay. able to get it in. It's a good size room, isn't it? It's Hello. lovely. It's a really conventional Hello. drawing room, but it's lovely. This room's got an amazing feeling. It has, it, it has. I, I'm not a great believer in that feng shui, but I definitely <laughs> believe that some rooms <laughs> flow. You know, it's something about the light or the where the door is and where the windows is. But when you come into this room and it just flows properly. Oh, that smell again. It's even stronger now. Mm. Oh, it's a fire. that's what it is. It's a wood burner. It's a wood burning stove. Really it's really warm. It's really warm. Look, isn't this a cozy room? Yeah. It's really snug, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it is a real snug. Oh, can we spend the rest of the weekend yeah. here? You want to take shoes yeah. off and crash you do. on the couch? You just <laughs> really it. do. It has got a similar so feeling to the, to the snug we had in, in our old house, didn't it? Really? Yeah. Really Does it feel similar. like coming home? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. really nice. Come and look at this. Oh, that is beautiful. This isn't nice. it lovely? Yeah. And every, the windows are so low. You don't have to look at the view. It sort of comes in at you. I think what I really, really like about it is the furniture just fits so well, doesn't yeah. it? It feels it's like a, a lovely farmhouse kitchen. That's something you've really got to watch out for with kitchens these days. It's very fashionable to have freestanding pieces of furniture. You could buy a house because of the kitchen and find when you moved in that the kitchen simply wasn't there anymore. The way to tell, you probably know this already, but if you can put your hand behind it, it's freestanding. And if you can't, it's not, basically. Look at this staircase. It really sweeps up, doesn't it? Uh, you've got to come and check out oh, this room. Wow. I know. Look, that's just the kids <laughs> annex. You should see this. Look. Look. Uh, uh, Isn't it fantastic? It's great. It's beautiful, look at it. It's just, just such a fantastic room and the view and everything. It's really bright, isn't it? It's great. It's I love great. it. It's fantastic, isn't it? I knew yeah. you'd like this room. Yes. <laughs> Usually, and this is really silly, I've left my bag in the Jeep, but you know what I always say? Two things you take to a house. A torch to check out dark storage areas and a tape measure plus your measurements for your special pieces of furniture. And I've broken my golden rule. I haven't got my torch with me. I left it in the car. But basically, I think even without the torch, we can see that that's a good storage space with a proper access. I want to show you the boys' rooms upstairs. <clears throat> These are real boys' rooms up here. Look. Universal opinion? 
It's absolutely brilliant. Perfect. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves it. I want it. You <laughs> want it. Everybody wants it. Old Shoreswood Hall fits the bill exactly. However, while reviewing the estate agent's details, a potential problem arises. We discover a restrictive clause, no, legally known as a covenant, attached to the property. The use of the hall is restricted to that of a private dwelling house, with the land to be used solely for agricultural, horticultural or silvicultural purposes. This covenant seems to forbid the use of the house for non-agricultural work, which means the Williams may not be able to use this yeah, house for their horse yeah, blanket exactly. business. Jane and Hugh love Old Shoreswood Hall. It's the perfect size and it's reasonably priced because of its relative isolation. However, we're not happy about the covenant, so Phil and I hit the phones to find out more. Yeah. Um, you know this restrictive covenant? Who owns that covenant? I mean, who enforces it? Oh, right, I see, but he's trying to buy the house himself. No. OK, well, well thanks so much for your help, James, and, and we will be in touch very, very soon. OK, bye then. The real problem is this flaming covenant. Mm. But that covenant belongs to the next-door neighbour who is attempting to buy the house himself. The farmer next door? Yeah, the one with the big barns. And if he turned nasty... Mm. After Hugh and Jane had bought the house... They would never be able to use the outbuilding as an office. No. So, I think the way to take this forward is to advise them to wait until the 23rd, mm -hmm. put in an offer, worry about the restrictive covenant afterwards. If, mm -hmm. the offer, if their offer is accepted, they can approach the farmer. If they're happy with the response, fine. If they're not, they withdraw. Yep. Yeah? Yep. Joys of the English system. The only other sticking point is the journey time to Hugh's work. He reckons that if we can do the journey in under an hour and 20 minutes, they'll attempt to buy it. If there's a crucial sticking point to buying a house, like how long it'll take you to get to work, make the journey. You're better off doing this before you put in an offer. So Phil stays back at the hotel to do a little more detective work while we try to drive to the Fourth Road Bridge from Northumberland in under an hour and 20 minutes. So how long do you think we've been on the road for now? Uh, 31 minutes. Hello, my name's Phil Spencer. I'm acting for uh, the intending purchase of a property in Shoreswood. We must be about halfway to Edinburgh at the moment. So if we keep up with this at the moment, then um, certainly things are looking up. Um, I'm really, I'm interested to know what your policy would be should the, should the owner of the farm ever wish to extend the buildings or, or indeed change their use? Uh, we've just had a time check. It's been about an hour travelling from the farm. Um, and we've just seen a sign for the Fourth Road Bridge, which is where my work is, which is another 21 miles. Will we be particularly worried about any noise or, um, or anything else that would impact on, on our environment? There's a bridge! There's a bridge! There's a bridge! Oh, yes. Come on, come on! Come on come Two on. minutes exactly to go. I think we might do it by the skin of our teeth. And, and they would need planning permission, is that correct? OK. Thank you very much for your time. Bye bye. You, what's this? <laughs> Fourth Road Bridge. Fourth Road Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's lots of things we've got to discuss, but in a nutshell, are you going to make it off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>